Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. I am very excited to share this guide with you because I really think it's one of my best and most fun uh, strategies. This is actually an improved version of my guide for Turkey, but while the overall strategy remains very similar, I massively improved and optimized several aspects of it. And we're going to make Turkey a superpower and it is going to be a lot of fun. Before we start, let me just say a couple of things. One, just to be clear, this is a single player guide for fascist Turkey. Two, this strategy is very consistent, but it is not the easiest. It does require some precise timing, so make sure to follow the guide very carefully, please. If you have any doubts, feel free to ask. You can do it in the comment section, but I would also recommend joining our Discord to meet our amazing community. Also, remember that I always upload the unedited version for my guides. You can find it in the description of the video together with the focus and research priorities. So if you want to see how we did something in detail, go and check that out. Finally, if you have been following the channel and enjoying my content, please do not forget to like the video and subscribe to my channel. It helps the channel grow faster, more than you think, which means I will be able to dedicate more time to it and there will be more content in it for you as well. That being said, I would say we can start, so let's make Turkey great again. If you're watching the unedited version you're seeing this, uh, this is uh, edited out for the main version of the guide to make it a bit faster uh, mind that in the unedited version i will mostly not be talking except uh, during the important moments uh, because i'm doing this uh, entirely alone so to make the editing a bit easier i do not talk while uh, working on it uh, while working on minor things at least also by the way if you're watching the unedited version you should know that uh, from time to time i make mistakes i repeat things twice so be patient with me please Alright guys, so let's start uh, with the initial setup uh, for Turkey. And the first thing we are going to look uh, at uh, are buildings. Uh, we want to build uh, full infrastructures and uh, civilian factories uh, in Istanbul and in Izmir. In terms of production, uh, we want the production of guns uh, to 4 and then I'm also adding for later the production of uh, support equipment at 1. At this point I would also suggest picking the MIO for uh, your guns. What you do with your navy doesn't matter much, I usually make convoys. <clears throat> Next, uh, we are going to split our armies. Uh, I will show you the final setup. Dikkat! 
Dikkat! Bizi alanın! Hazırım! Emirleriniz! Harekete hazırım! Toparladın! Okay, so in terms of our armies, we're not going to use them uh, very soon, uh, but I already prepared them uh, for the next war we are going to fight with it, which is going to be uh, against uh, Greece. So we created an army of 10 infantry divisions and we prepared a naval invasion from uh, Izmir to the area of uh, Greece, uh, this area of Greece. Uh, I split my units for the naval invasions in groups of two and I assigned two to each of these provinces that you see here. I also made a dedicated guide for naval invasions uh, in which I talk specifically about these invasions so you can check that one if you want to see it a bit more in detail. Uh, then we created an army with these um, less uh, uh, upgraded divisions, uh, let's say, and we assigned them to Izmir with the order of conquering uh, the island of Samos. We created an army with uh, three mountaineers and two infantry, regular infantry divisions and we assigned it, uh, assigned it to this border against uh, Greece with this offensive uh, command. We kept uh, the cavalry and the light tank uh, in uh, this area with the order of uh, conquering the island of uh, Mitilini. And then we created an army of eight infantry with our best general. With a defensive line order around here, we are going to send these guys to Spain as uh, volunteers uh, as soon as we can. Uh, other than that, I changed the motorization priority to maximum and I started training all of my armies, uh, assigning them to a marshal and uh, shift clicking on this uh, command here. I'm also doing the same with the planes, I gathered them here and I said to train and I also gathered my navy in the area of uh, Izmir. We're also going to make some minor changes to our occupation law. We want uh, the local police force to be the default law, but in Kurdistan uh, we want uh, martial uh, law, because uh, otherwise the unrest uh, will become too high too quickly. Now, with this, our initial setup is done. I suggest you save the game, just in case you make a mistake later. You don't need to redo all of this. And then we can unpause and we can continue at speed 4 until we get the first series of events. Uh, there isn't much that we will need to do. Okay, so this should be the first message, the first series of events uh, that you get. Uh, and it's very important that you do not offer the compromise. Uh, you go for no settlements with the Soviets. Uh, and then uh, you, you wait for their response. Again, you say nothing has changed. And you always win this series of events, which gives you a lot of uh, base stability and a lot of political power, which we are going to use uh, right away to pick the silent workhorse.
Sure, shortly after, when we get to 105 political power, we are going to pick the financial expert. Around 70 political power, but we actually also need uh, 20 command power, so we will need to wait uh, a little bit longer. We're going to pick the army reformer. There we go. So we're going to pick this guy. Oh, by the way, if you're curious, we are going to completely ignore all of these uh, events, uh, special uh, events uh, for Turkey. They will not be an issue for us, uh, for our strategy. The civil war in uh, the civil war in uh, Spain started, uh, but we cannot send uh, volunteers yet uh, because we are non-aligned. Uh, we'll be able to do it uh, a bit later. Okay, as soon as you complete uh, this focus, uh, you should also have uh, enough uh, political power to pick uh, nationalism. Was not nationalism? Was it? It was. If you get this message, I would suggest embargoing Italy. This doesn't always happen, though. Okay, at 70 political power, we are going to pick uh, the uh, ground support expert. And shortly after, you should have about 35 uh, army experience, you want to pick right away the professional offic officer corps. The professional officer corps. Hazırım efendim! Hazırım! After you get free trade, you will need to adjust your trade a lot to make sure you always have enough uh, resources for everything. You should also be able to pick uh, partial mobilization right after completing the focus.
be very fun am i your stuff but <sighs> this is my new favorite uh, priority for infantry mio by the way Now, at uh, about 70 political power and uh, enough command power, I suggest you pick the infantry expert. Next, we are going to wait for our leader, Ataturk, to get sick. This always happens, but the timing may be slightly different. If he hasn't gotten sick yet, uh, when you get uh, free civilian factories, uh, you can proceed uh, with the decisions before he gets sick. The important things here are... We're going to pick uh, revolutionism. We're going to pick revolutionism. And uh, republicanism. We're going to add more civilian factories uh, to Istanbul and uh, Izmir. We're going to build uh, full infrastructures and uh, civilian factories uh, in uh, Trabzon. So you do this uh, either when Atatur gets sick uh, or when you get free civilian factories. Okay, here we got the message. It was just uh, a few days later. And uh, we get the message that Ataturk is now sick. We are going to wait until uh, this uh, event is almost over and then we are going to retire Ataturk before this event ends and fails.
Okay, we only have a few days uh, left uh, before this event fails, so we are going to retire Ataturk. This will also make us fascist. If we did everything correctly, at, at least. Then, as soon as possible, in uh, my case it's right away because uh, uh, the event uh, triggered a bit later, we're going to pick uh, Republicanism. Uh, we will keep uh, picking Republicanism. Uh, basically, we're going to pick Republican. We are going to pick Republicanism many times uh, because we have very big issues with stability and war support at the moment. Okay, as soon as you can, uh, you should also pick, uh, again, uh, Revolutionism. Okay, as soon as we complete this focus, we are going to send uh, our troops to the Spanish uh, Civil War. Now, technically, you could do it a bit earlier, as soon as you become fascist, uh, but you can only send two divisions. After this focus, you can send up to eight divisions. Technically, we are fascist, so we should send them to nationalist Spain, but I suggest that you send them to the regular Spain instead. This is entirely up to you, mind that. And that's simply because uh, in this way we can extend uh, the civil war a bit longer and farm uh, for ourselves a little bit more army experience. If we, if, we, if we send our divisions to nationally Spain, we're just going to end the civil war very quickly and get less army experience out of it. So let's send our uh, eight, uh, army of eight with the best general uh, to Spain. Uh, we don't have uh, air volunteers in this case, so sadly we cannot send them. We're also going uh, to pick at the same time, as we send our volunteers to Spain, we're also going to pick uh, nationalism for the uh, war support. How you manage the Spanish uh, Civil War is entirely up to you, as long as ideally you do not lose uh, these 8 divisions, that's quite important, uh, and you farm as much army experience as uh, you can. Uh, keep an eye on uh, the decisions, however, because you want to pick republicanism as soon as it is off uh, cooldown.
at some point uh, Ataturk will die. It doesn't matter. It's something unavoidable. That's fine. Always uh, keep an eye on the decisions because we want to pick republicanism again a couple more times as soon as possible. This is the priority for our fighters, am I Okay, here we go. We can pick uh, republicanism again. Let's do so. Now, at this point, you will find uh, the indication to pick the focus uh, fatherland first, uh, but you will not be able to pick it right away because you need more than 30% support uh, for the fascist party. You just need to wait a couple of days. Uh, check uh, the support for fascist party here. And then uh, before you run out of time for the focus, uh, make sure that you pick uh, fatherlands first. This, by the way, is how close uh, the timing is uh, for this guide. When you get uh, free civilians, again, we are slightly late in the sense that I usually pick another republicanism before it, uh, but it will be just a matter of a few days. When you get free civilians... We're going to, f uh, we're going to build a full military factories in the 100% provinces. And uh, we're going to replace uh, the civilian factories in Trabzon, except for the one which is being built, uh, again, uh, with military factories. And we're also going to add uh, full infrastructures and uh, military factories uh, in Edirne. Oh, look at this. We got a nice encirclement in Spain.
Okay, we can finally pick uh, republicanism again. Let's do so. When you get uh, free military factories, uh, we need to make some changes with our military production. Specifically, we are taking guns uh, production down to only two factories, uh, we are increasing support equipment to five, uh, and we are assigning all future factories uh, to artillery. Make sure to also just trade. Okay, next uh, we are going to pick uh, this focus, so you will find it uh, on the focus priority list, uh, but there is something very important that we need to do before this focus is completed, when we are about uh, 20 days uh, into this focus. So keep an eye on it. And there we go, when you are at 20 days uh, into this focus, uh, you need to do some stuff. The main thing we are going to do at this point is we are going to start uh, justifying on uh, Greece. And we are going to pick a uh, war economy. Now again uh, we need to keep an eye for this event uh, because we do not want uh, this uh, to trigger so before it triggers we are going to do a couple of things.
first of all, as soon as possible, we're going to pick Republicanism again. And then if you follow the timing correctly, you should get the focus done before the crisis is over. That's very important because the focus is going to give us enough uh, political power to deal with this crisis. We can wait a little bit longer until uh, the crisis is almost uh, over and then uh, we are going to abandon etatism, if that's the right uh, pronunciation, abolish etatism, this decision here. And this will save us from this crisis and it will also give us some extra political power, which we're going to use uh, right away. for the nationalism decision here, to increase our war support. At this point, we're also going to make some changes to our infantry divisions. I'm going to change them to OFF, which is the name I usually give to my offensive divisions. But more importantly, we are going to give them the engineer company and the recon uh, cavalry detachment. and the support artillery. So this is our uh, final division for now. Now what you do in uh, Spain doesn't matter anymore uh, very much because very soon we are going to start our uh, conquer of Greece. By the way, let me take a couple of uh, let me take a couple of seconds to explain uh, what we did here with the focuses, what we are doing with the focuses. We are researching this one. Why are we researching the Anglo the Anglo Turkish agreement? Because thanks to this focus, uh, the United Kingdom is going to guarantee our independence, which means that when we declare war to Greece, uh, the United Kingdom is not going to intervene, even if they guaranteed them. If you know the game, you know that when you are above 25% world tension, the United Kingdom tends to guarantee all of the countries you justify on. By having a guarantee from them, we are going to make sure that they are not going to disrupt our plans in all of our future expansions and conquests. So this focus is, this uh, priority is very, very important. And that's why we are waiting for the end of this focus uh, to start our conquest of Greece. Okay, we got uh, our focus and we should get uh, at the same exact time the claim on Greece as well. It's time uh, to start our offensive wars. Now I suggest uh, you make a save before starting your conquest of Greece, if you can. And then we are going to declare war on uh, Greece. Of course, we want uh, Romania to join this war. And we're also going to start uh, justifying a war goal on uh, Yugoslavia. And 
need to slow down the speed a little bit. Uh, now the reason we picked uh, the reason we picked all of those decisions is that we want our stability and war support to be above 50%. Uh, if you're below 50% at this point, uh, you're going to have a problem. Now I'm not going to cover this war in uh, detail, but we are going for two naval invasions. The first one in this area, and I will sh uh, I will soon show you the second one. What we are going to do though, is we are going to start all of our offensives at once. Make sure to assign the few planes you have as well. The reason we start all of the offensives is that Greece tend to have a lot of divisions in here. And by attacking them, uh, despite the fact that we are not going to be able to defeat them, we keep them stuck in here while our naval invasion is uh, hopefully succeeding in taking the area of Athens. And it's going already very well. If you feel like you're struggling with your naval invasions, you can always use a force attack to make them more likely to succeed. This is not the case here. Okay, we got Athens. Okay, when our uh, volunteers in Spain uh, come back, uh, we can start planning a second naval invasion with them. I would still use uh, groups of two for the naval invasion I would, and I would invade uh, this area with uh, Thessalonic being, uh, being our main uh, goal. I'm going to pick one more republicanism in this case uh, because I couldn't pick it before but as long as your stability is above 50% you're fine. Always check the base value as you can see in this case it's 90% and I try to get it as close as possible to 100% same for uh, war support but stability is more important. Oh, 
Toparladın. Hazırım. to start our second naval invasion sometimes this is not even necessary but just in case uh, it will speed up uh, things uh, significantly oh, i think the war will be already over in this case we got most of the greek division stuck in here there's there is a little bit of rng so it's not exactly like this all, all the time this time it went particularly well Now, uh, for this uh, conquest and for all future ones, uh, we're going to apply the same rule. And that is, we're going to puppet and not annex. We're going to take the navy whenever it's possible. And then we're going to take war reparations, but not resource rights. The reason for that is that uh, with free trade, actually resource rights are counterproductive. Because you get those resources as if they were yours, and therefore you export them immediately. While uh, by just puppeting Greece without resource rights, we can actually import uh, these resources from Greece uh, at a much uh, more convenient uh, uh, at a much more convenient rate. So war reparations, yes, but not resource rights if you are using free trade. Now that we got uh, now that we got Greece, uh, we're also going to make some adjustments to our trade. Uh, since we now can import uh, from our puppet, uh, it's more convenient to do so. So you can select subjects in here to make sure that you're importing from uh, your puppets. As you can see, if with only one civilian factory, we get all of their uh, steel and we, all of their uh, what is it uh, tungsten. And I don't think they have uh, oh they have aluminium uh, aluminium as well. Perfect. Then uh, we get everything we need uh, from Greece with only three factories, uh, which is going to free a lot of our other factories uh, for ourselves. Next, uh, we need to prepare for uh, Yugoslavia. Now I am going to I I am going to assign the two infantry divisions, which were with the Mountaineers, back uh, to uh, our main army here. Also, I'm also bringing him. I'm also making him the, the primary army in here because we are going to use this army for most of our conquests from now on. We need to plan the naval invasion of uh, Yugoslavia and we're going for the area of uh, Split. Now this time I do it with groups of three. I send three divisions to Split and uh, three to Dubrovnik. Another three in between, hoping that they will be able to disembark. And the very last one in here, almost sure that they will be uh, able to disembark. Uh, our secondary infantry army is going to stay here, ready to uh, support the naval invasion as soon as we disembark. Our defensive infantry is going to be at the border with uh, um, Bulgaria for later. And then you can actually merge the other two armies, uh, Mountaineers and uh, Cavalry. And I usually assign them to the southern border of Yugoslavia just to keep as many of their divisions busy down here. Just to keep them worried. We're not actually going to call Greece into this war. We got the Greek Navy as well. And we're going to send our improved fleet uh, to uh, this harbor here, ready for the naval invasion of the Balkans. And we're going to assign our planes to the main army so that they automatically follow it uh, around. While we wait for Yugoslavia, I also suggest uh, you shift click here and train again all of your armies. Usually I actually get this focus while I am at war with Greece, but in this case Greece went down very quickly. In any case, as soon as you get that focus, uh, you are going to 
we're going to pick some important things. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to pick the Superior Firepower Doctrine. We are going to pick uh, the Suppressive Barrage Tactic. And we're going to pick the two spirits, uh, Bold Attack and uh, Smoke and Fire. Bold Attack is actually not that important, you can skip it if you prefer. We also take this chance to take our Air Doctrines or Spirits. Uh, in uh, this case we start uh, with this one. And then we take uh, centralized control and then we pick as many doctrines as possible. In this case it's only one. We can also pick as many uh, superior firepower doctrines as possible. It's actually two of them, not bad. Uh, these are the very important ones, so as close to them as we can get. Uh, that's better, the better. And then we're also going to pick uh, the decision uh, modernize our tactics uh, down here. It's 50 political power. Next, uh, we're waiting for uh, Yugoslavia. Since we were fast, I think we have uh, quite a long time before the claim is done. And also, by the way, in this case, uh, something important and interesting. We are going to talk about it a bit, a bit later again, but uh, check how uh, Yugoslavia is not only guaranteed uh, by Romania, it's also guaranteed by France. We don't want to attack uh, Yugoslavia while they have the guarantee from, Fran from France, but we have everything under control. I will show you later how we are going to deal with this. Take here. Okay. This is the focus you want. As soon as you get uh, this focus, uh, go and uh, research immediately the engineer company upgrade. We were waiting for this focus specifically, it's now only going to take 33 days. If you get uh, three civilian factories at this point, uh, there is a little bit of RNG, so you may be getting them a bit later. In any case, uh, uh, what you need to do at this point is you need to build uh, two infrastructures in uh, Bursa, one in Antalya, and then, uh, after the two infrastructures, you go for full military uh, factories in both uh, provinces. Okay, we got our claim on uh, Yugoslavia, but as you can see, France is uh, justifying them. Is, uh, sorry, but as you can see, France uh, is uh, guaranteeing them. We don't want to be at war with France, so we're going to wait. Uh, luckily, this is timed perfectly because in September 1938, uh, after the Munich conference, uh, France is going to withdraw their guarantee of Yugoslavia, no matter what. So we just need to wait for about one month.
Meanwhile, I'm going to pick one uh, last uh, Republicanism to get our stability as close as possible to 100%. Uh, and I'm also going to pick a special decision uh, down here. I'm also going to pick Authorized Nurgi Killigil Factory. Because this will give us uh, the MIO for artillery, which is uh, pretty cool to have. So we are also going to pick this one. Now, although we cannot uh, attack Yugoslavia right away, we got our claim, so we are now going to fabricate a claim as soon as possible on uh, Bulgaria as well. Okay, here we go. The Munich Agreement means that Yugoslavia is no longer guaranteed by France, so at this point we can easily and freely declare war on uh, Yugoslavia, so we are going to do that. Now, before attacking Yugoslavia, we need to do a couple more things. So we declare war on them, but we didn't call Greece, which means uh, actually there isn't uh, a war going on at the moment. Before we start the naval invasion, I suggest uh, you make sure that uh, your infantry has uh, fully upgraded support equipment and improved artillery. So we're going to wait a little bit longer. I usually start the invasion around October 1938. Okay, as you can see, it's October and we finished upgrading our infantry uh, with uh, support equipment and uh, improved artillery. We can now start the naval invasion. I would suggest making a save. But then we can start our naval invasion. Now the goal here is if possible, well the main goal is to disembark, but if possible we want to take the entire coast of uh, Yugoslavia, cut them off uh, from the sea completely in, uh, in this area. If you feel like you're going to struggle here, don't worry and use a force attack. The divisions between uh, these two armies almost always disembark uh, and you can use them to make sure that uh, you conquer at least one of the two forts. Use all of your units, use force attack if needed. We're going to use it just in case. We need to take the harbors as fast as possible because uh, our divisions here are in uh, trouble. Okay, we got uh, split. That's uh, very important. Now we are going to send all of our divisions uh, to reinforce. So these divisions, I mean, these 10 divisions to reinforce our army in here. And meanwhile, uh, we're going to try to push for the rest of the area, uh, rest of the coast here. See if we can get it done. This looks good. Make sure to attack them here, even if you think you will fail, uh, just to keep their division stuck uh, so that uh, your other divisions can hopefully conquer the entire coast. We did this uh, perfectly in this case. Uh, now we're going to chill for a bit longer because Yugoslavia is actually not that easy to take. So we don't want uh, to burn our divisions against theirs. Uh, we're just going to keep the cost for now. They are struggling for supplies in here, so they will burn through supplies uh, while we are totally fine. I would suggest stopping the naval invasion at this point, however. Okay. 
Okay, as we unlock uh, trucks, uh, we're going to produce uh, some. This is my suggested priority. This is the suggested priority for um, trucks and mechanized. We're going to produce a couple of trucks, uh, take uh, the factories out of uh, artillery. Uh, at the same time, we're also going to make some changes to our defensive infantry. First of all, I'm going to call them DEF and change the uh, icon and then we're also going to give them some engineer company and support artillery and we're going to save our defensive template we're also going to add the first artillery battalion to our offensive divisions like this Before we really push into Yugoslavia, we want our offensive armies to have more artillery, more offensive power. Okay, quite interesting. In this game, uh, we are being unlucky with the guarantees, uh, but no worries, because again, we got it covered. Uh, Bulgaria is not only guaranteed by the United Kingdom, which wouldn't matter, thanks to our focuses, but it's also guaranteed by Czechoslovakia. Now, that's a bit of a problem. We don't want to be at war with Czechoslovakia, so we are going to need to wait a bit longer before we attack uh, Bulgaria. But this is not going to affect the overall strategy. If you notice, like in this case, uh, before the claim is done, uh, you can cancel the justification because uh, in any case we are not going to be able to attack them in time so we can do it a bit later i will just leave it uh, assuming that you are also uh, that you also didn't notice uh, until you got the claim and we'll manage it from there We got uh, our claim of uh, Bulgaria, but as I said, uh, they are guaranteed by everyone. So at this point, we can definitely not attack uh, Bulgaria. We're going to have to wait. Now, actually, France may be a problem, but we'll see a bit later.
Okay, so if uh, only the United Kingdom and Czechoslovakia guarantee Bulgaria, then you're fine. You wait until late January 1939 and you start fabricating another claim on them. In our case, we were very unlucky because all of them, including France, uh, uh, guaranteed Bulgaria. In this case, we really cannot take Bulgaria at the moment. So we are going to have to delay the invasion of Bulgaria uh, for later when uh, France goes down. We're going to focus on uh, Yugoslavia instead. We're going to start our push against Yugoslavia in uh, early March If uh, you get uh, free civilian factories, again, that's not guaranteed. Uh, you go for full infrastructures plus uh, military factories uh, in Ankara and in uh, Malatya. It's now March 1939, so we are ready to start our push against uh, Yugoslavia. I will not cover this war in detail. You can watch the unedited version if you uh, want to see how we manage it uh, very carefully. If you're watching the unedited version, I'm wasting their um, defensive abilities here. So I start the offensive, but then I, I don't actually push them. So they wasted the ability. I'm going to do this a couple of times, uh, and then they will probably run out of uh, command power. Okay, let's, let's go again. And again, let's stop. Um, when pushing Yugoslavia, we are also going to pick uh, army regrouping uh, here for 100 political power. And we're also going to add uh, the second artillery battalion to our uh, offensive divisions. This is also a good time to add uh, the MIO we unlocked uh, to our artillery. So we can select it here. i 
dersiniz efendim. Okay, perfect. It looks like they ran out, ran out of uh, command power. Now we're going to use our force attack. And they had another one. Breaking them at first can be a bit difficult, but once you break them, uh, you break the main front, uh, they actually go down fairly easily. As soon as you can, uh, make sure to pick the military doctrine uh, because these ones are very, very powerful. Also, as soon as you get uh, the concentrated industry research, make sure to build uh, military factories in all of the 100% provinces uh, and give them a higher priority compared to Ankara and uh, Malatya. We're also going to add uh, the last uh, artillery as soon as possible to our uh, offensive army. Here we go, okay, now we have uh, enough uh, army experience, so we're going to add uh, the last artillery battalion to our offensive divisions. I'm 
efendim. Saldırıya devam edin. Finally, I was able to cut them off here. If you're struggling, uh, if you're struggling in Yugoslavia, you can also send uh, some of uh, these divisions back to help, uh, or at least to cover the front. This is going to help massively. Okay, do I still remember what to do? Yeah, I wanted this one. Okay, this is the MIO priority for artillery. Efendim. Hazırım efendim. Okay, Yugoslavia is uh, down. We're perfectly on time. Uh, for Yugoslavia, we're going to do the same thing as before. So we're going to take the Navy, pop it, uh, and take well, reparations, but not uh, resource rights. Now, pause the game immediately, because at this point, uh, if you could fabricate a claim on uh, Bulgaria, which again is usually the case, uh, I would suggest you go for Bulgaria first. Uh, it's easier to take Romania with uh, Bulgaria conquered. If you're unlucky, like in my case, uh, we need to go for Romania right away. At this point, we should try to take advantage of the fact that they don't currently have divisions in here, and try to send our divisions as fast as possible to conquer as much of Romania as uh, we possibly can. We're also going to start uh, justifying a war goal on uh, Hungary. <laughs> Go 
Paladin! Emredersiniz efendim! Hazırım efendim! Emredersiniz! 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 Oh, since I think it would be difficult to take Romania only from this side, I'm still planning a naval invasion uh, for this coast uh, just in case we get stuck here and we cannot easily take Romania uh, only from this side. I think we really need the naval invasion uh, to make sure that we can push in here. Let's see. Okay, looks like the naval invasion uh, is uh, indeed a good plan uh, if you cannot take Bulgaria because uh, it will make things a bit easier with Romania. Okay, when you complete uh, this focus, uh, you want to change the occupation law in uh, uh, Kurdistan to uh, reconciliation. Okay. 
We also want uh, to create an agency. And we also want to change something with our production. We want uh, the guns production to be back at 5. The trucks at uh, 3. And the rest uh, to artillery. So take uh, these uh, uh, factories from uh, artillery and then uh, this should be your new priority in terms of production. We're also going to start uh, recruiting another four offensive uh, divisions. I'm actually slightly later on this one, but whenever you can, uh, you should pick uh, this decision, instruct the proper use of modern infrastructure. And at this point, I would also pick a commence overhaul for our training methods. Romania is strong, but if you can keep the pressure up on two fronts, uh, whether it is uh, Bulgaria and Yugoslavia or a naval invasion and uh, Yugoslavia, they will not be able to hold. Pandem! Biz alanın. Emirleriniz. Baş üstüne efendim.
Okay, we got uh, our agency with the agency. Now we want to prioritize uh, the naval department, uh, then the other departments and anti-partisan. Uh, we want to get to two spies, uh, so we need a total of five upgrades. Uh, I suggest uh, maybe these this three and these two. Okay, perfect. We got, uh, look at the timing, we got uh, Romania down exactly as we got our claim on uh, Hungary. So perfect timing. We are going to do the same as usual with uh, Romania as well. So although this never happened in my previous test runs, uh, this shows how you can easily conquer Romania even in case uh, Bulgaria is not available at that time. So that's not going to be a big issue. No, 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 we don't want this. Wait a second. Okay. Now, if you get uh, Romania a bit later, a bit after you get the claim on Hungary, it's not a big deal. But ideally, you want to take Hungary as fast as possible. And you would like to declare, and we would like to declare word on them after we are done with uh, uh, Romania and uh, Yugoslavia. So now we can prepare our armies at the border. This is a much easier war than the previous ones. We can maybe readjust the trade a little bit considering that now we have Romania. I also suggest you start importing some oil from Romania. It's totally worth a factory, so why not? This is not worth it. And this is not worth it, okay. Now, before we attack Hungary, we need, before we attack Hungary, we need to do a couple more things. We need to start uh, justifying on uh, Spain. And we can already prepare our fleet. We don't need it here anymore. We can send our fleet uh, here instead. We're also going to recruit uh, 19 uh, defensive uh, divisions. And uh, once again, we are going to change the production a little bit. So basically we want the production of everything to be at 5 except for guns uh, which uh, we will uh, um, to which we will assign all of the future factories. And I had just finished doing this and I need to do it again.
By the way, we got a very important doctrine uh, to unlock. Uh, always remember to unlock these doctrines when uh, when you can. I'm a bit worried that uh, Hungary may join uh, the Axis, uh, but hopefully they will not. Uh, this usually happens, uh, so uh, Hungary joins the Axis if you reload the game uh, after invading Greece, uh, when you're at war with Yugoslavia, Romania and Bulgaria. If that happens, if Hungary joins the Axis, there is nothing you can do. You cannot take Hungary until uh, you take down the Axis later on. Okay, I'd say we are ready for uh, Hungary, so let's go and easily take down uh, Hungary. Ah, right, we need to call in this case uh, both uh, uh, Yugoslavia and Romania into our war. But then Hungary is just a formality, we have very good divisions at this point of the game. Okay, as you can see this was pretty smooth. I'm going to pop at Hungary with more reparations as usual. If they have anything to give us, ah, oh, they have some steel, that's good. Okay, now that Hungary is done, uh, we need to prepare for the next uh, invasions. Uh, the main one will be the invasion of Spain, for which we are going to use our main uh, infantry. Uh, I usually start from uh, Patras and I go for the area of uh, Valencia, assigning the divisions uh, two at a time. Okay, it should look like uh, this. Our secondary infantry will be in uh, Athens, uh, waiting to reinforce the main infantry as soon as they disembark. And uh, these other units, free units that we have, can also reinforce in uh, Spain, help hold the border. But what is very important is that we assign our defensive uh, divisions uh, to Iraq, because they are actually going to perform uh, some uh, offensive actions in, uh, in Iraq. I want to plan uh, an offensive line. Uh, I use the spearhead in this case, uh, like this, uh, to conquer Iraq uh, as uh, fast as possible. And while we wait, of course, we can train our divisions. Okay, we got uh, our first spy and we're going to assign the spy to Spain immediately and that is mostly to get the naval superiority because uh, Spain actually has a fleet uh, and without enough intel and uh, the naval department which I, uh, I was showing you, it's actually difficult to pull out uh, this uh, naval invasion. So the spy helps massively. 
Wow, France is really in the mood of uh, uh, annoying me in, uh, in this run. Okay, but France is going to go down, so... Okay, we got our claim on uh, Spain, but for some reason in this game France decided that uh, they must be extremely annoying. Usually it is the UK justifying, uh, oh better, usually it's the UK guaranteeing on other countries and that's not a big issue. But if it is France, uh, we need to wait for France to go down, which will be very soon, so it's not a big deal. Meanwhile, uh, we can start uh, justifying a war goal on uh, Iraq. If uh, France did not uh, justify on uh, Spain, sorry, France did not guarantee Spain, uh, then we would attack them and invade them as soon as possible. Now, if you get uh, free civilian factories, I suggest uh, you go for uh, you go for full military factories uh, in all of the 100% provinces, if any was left, uh, and then uh, in your subjects, uh, at least in the 80% and 100% provinces uh, they have. Moreover, we can start building infrastructures and forts at the border with Germany in Yugoslavia. Uh, not in Maribor. I would suggest going for this province instead so that uh, you will defend the river. This is not going to be part of the guide, but uh, it will be extremely useful for the next uh, chapter of this series, let's say. Don't forget uh, to keep uh, upgrading the and uh, don't forget uh, to upgrade the agency until you get uh, the second spy. Okay, when you complete uh, this focus, I suggest uh, you give uh, rights to Chromium to Italy. And we don't care because we don't get our resources anyway with uh, trade, uh, free trade. And in this way we get uh, some land and also some base stability. There we go. Başüstüne efendim. Oh, I'm very, very happy to have France finally out of the way. Now we can proceed with what we planned. 
So, uh, war on uh, Spain immediately. We are a bit late because of France. But it's going to be fine. Let's see if we get uh, the naval superiority. We get it right away. This is very good. This is thanks to our spy, by the way. Because we have already a very good intel efficiency. Uh, so, let's start immediately our naval invasion of uh, uh, Spain. Indeed, I indicated a fortnight ago, as clearly as I could to the house, that the worst possibilities were open. And I made it perfectly clear that whatever happened in France would make no difference. By the way, at this point of the game, uh, we can pick the legalized new aircraft system or safety regulations. If necessary, alone. Mm, I have thought it right to this occasion to give the house and uh, since we immediately got uh, the naval superiority, the war in Spain is usually is not a big issue. You can also assign your spies uh, to root out uh, resistance in uh, Kurdistan. I'm going to do it with the second spy. I'm going to keep the, the first spy here too. Make the invasion a bit easier. Better die than submit to tyranny and such a tyranny. And I do not dissociate myself from them. But I can assure them that our professional advisors of the three services unitedly advise that we should carry out and that there are good and reasonable. Okay, let's see the invasion of Spain, but usually this is fairly simple. They are defending, but not enough. Okay, we disembarked uh, without issues. And we can immediately send over our troops. Actually, in this case, uh, what I would suggest is merging the two armies and creating only one army. Now we can have an army of 24. But I would also suggest uh, uh, sending the other divisions, uh, so your puppets, uh, the mountaineers and so on, uh, to Spain. Just uh, to cover the front a little bit better. Make sure you assign them, unlike what I just did. Spain uh, usually is a fairly easy war, so I'm not going to cover it in detail in this guide. Uh, what I usually do is I go for Madrid first, uh, then I cut them off in the north, I kill all of their divisions in here. I go for the northern part of Spain, I declare war on Portugal, take Portugal, and then finally end Spain after taking Portugal. Feel free to manage it uh, differently if you prefer. What happened to Valencia? Oh! Some sudden Portuguese units appeared in Valencia for some reason. Weird reasons. Some indestructible units appeared in Valencia. Okay, we got uh, our claim on uh, Iraq, so we are going to declare war to Iraq immediately. 
and uh, we are going to start our offensives uh, offensive immediately as well I also forgot something quite important, I'm sorry guys, uh, when uh, you complete the research on uh, planes, uh, it was the last one that we completed I believe, uh, you should also of course uh, make uh, the new fighters as fast as possible, so I'm going to do it now, I could have done it probably a couple of weeks ago. So of course we are going for our usual F2 design. And our usual C2 design. Uh, by the way, also remember to click down here for the auto upgrade. I often forget it, but it's pretty convenient because it will automatically automatically upgrade uh, to the latest uh, MIO traits uh, without you having to click a lot. So this box uh, is very, very convenient uh, to avoid uh, having to constantly upgrade uh, MIOs. Well, of course, we need to change the production a little bit now. Okay, so in terms of production, uh, this is our new priority. Support equipment to 4, trucks to 3, uh, anti-air to 3, improved artillery to 5, uh, 25 uh, factories to guns, 10 uh, to the C2, the cast design, and everything else including future factories all to fighters. We need to adjust the trade of course. Uh, now, the other thing we need to do when uh, we declare war on Iraq is uh, we want to immediately start uh, justifying on uh, Iran as well. So let's do that. We're also going to add uh, the anti-air support company uh, to our offensive divisions. And uh, we are going to pick uh, extensive uh, conscription because we are going to need it uh, soon. Our manpower is starting to fall down a bit too dangerously. And we can continue.
toparladın. Oh, since on uh, Vichy France we have a retake uh, core state uh, claim, uh, we can get it right away and uh, it only lasts for 55 days, it's basically the same as uh, Iran. I need to do this uh, because I need to claim Bulgaria as well, so if you already got Bulgaria you may not need to do this. I'm going to claim, uh, claim Vichy France at this point. Okay, when you get uh, your additional defensive units uh, merge them with the army that is already pushing in uh, Iraq, they will help uh, the push. And uh, since I'm a bit late in Spain, I will start uh, this offensive. I would like you guys to push where you are told and not where you want. Thank you. By the way, if you're wondering why we got uh, the focus with the non-aggression for the non-aggression pact for the okay, let me start again. If you're wondering why we got this focus for the non-aggression pact with the Soviet Union, it is because sometimes, but not always, the Soviet Union uh, suddenly decides to uh, fabricate a claim on you, just in case, uh, just to be safe. Uh, we're going to get that focus so that they cannot attack us. Şunları. Emr 
edersiniz efendim. Dikkat! 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 Ateş altındayım. Okay, we got uh, our claim on uh, Iran. Ideally, we wanted to attack them too, but uh, we are still uh, uh, in the war against Iraq. Usually, the war is over by this time, but uh, we are pretty close. Uh, in any case, uh, what we want to do now is we want to fabricate a claim on uh, Portugal. Uh, except it's going to take too long at the moment because we are still fabricating the claim on uh, Vichy France. So we're going to wait for 10 more days. Uh, and then we're going to get our claim on Vichy France and Portugal. Of course, these guys are pushing wherever. Oh, finally, Iraq uh, went down. That's very good news. Let's pop it them. And then let's prepare our army immediately to attack uh, Iran. Uh, Iran can be fairly tough at times, uh, so we need to be ready. And I also suggest assigning some planes uh, by this point uh, to your army in uh, Iran. Uh, they probably don't have a very good air force, uh, so with some planes uh, and the air superiority, uh, the war will be a lot faster easier to get okay we also got uh, the claim on uh, Vichy France uh, now we should be able to claim Portugal usually it's very fast uh, of course uh, in this run uh, which is uh, a pretty unlucky run so far it's not fast uh, let's see if uh, Bulgaria is uh, faster for some reason no, it's the same uh, length. I would go for uh, Portugal first, uh, since we are already here. So let's start uh, getting Portugal. Most of the time Portugal only takes uh, 10 days, uh, the claim in Portugal. But again, there is a little bit of RNG in uh, there. Yeah, we got our second spy, that's good. At least we are lucky with the spies. Uh, now, the spies, we don't need them in Spain anymore. So, as I said, you can use them for uh, rooting out uh, the resistance. Uh, and you actually need them here for that. Uh, that's why we got uh, anti-partisan as well. 
Okay, while we wait uh, for Portugal, at this point we could even capitulate Spain. I usually prefer not to capitulate Spain because I don't want to cool them into the war against Portugal. But since we are late, uh, we are going to do that. Uh, we're just going to end uh, Spain before Portugal. It should be fine anyway. Okay, I'd say we can start the war against uh, Iran. Uh, remember to call uh, Iraq into it as well. And then we can start immediately the offensive and hopefully it will go well. And meanwhile, let's also end uh, Spain. At least the war in Iran is going uh, quite well at the moment. Why are they not taking Sevilla? Sevilla will end the war, definitely. And they are taking everything except for Sevilla. This is so stupid. What the fuck are you doing? Unbelievable. Okay, Spain uh, is down, uh, we are going to take the navy, this is quite important actually, they have a good navy, and then uh, we are going to pop at them and take uh, the resource, uh, not the resource rights, the war reparations. Now, after Spain uh, goes down, uh, usually, well, usually you have already taken Portugal, in our case, uh, we're going to take Portugal next, but it's time to prepare for Vichy France as well, uh, so we're going to use uh, all of our secondary divisions let's say our puppets uh, the mountaineers and so on and we are going to send them uh, to this part of spain or better morocco and uh, plan the offensive against uh, france now we need to check one more thing okay uh, this part of vichy france sometimes is uh, free france it's better when it is vichy france like in this case uh, because taking this part of Vichy France will not be enough uh, for them to capitulate. We also need to take usually uh, these cities in Northern Africa and uh, this part uh, uh, in uh, Syria. Control. 
Now, uh, we are going to get ready for uh, Portugal, but I think I will split my army into two because I also want uh, to take uh, Bulgaria and uh, we're going to need to be ready for that. So, this is something you usually wouldn't have to do unless, uh, again, uh, Bulgaria uh, was not uh, conquered before. I'm going to send an army back uh, to Bulgaria. Now, what would be the easiest and fastest way to take Bulgaria? I think it would be probably from Yugoslavia, something like this. Uh, yeah, so we're going to send them there. And then we're going to prepare the other army to quickly take down uh, Portugal. Portugal is very easy anyway. Hopefully they know what to do. Because people here sometimes get stupid and don't know what to do. See these guys, for example, they got stupid. So you need to manually send them to a harbor because for some reason they don't know that they can go down there. They st still do not know, so I'm going to manually force send them there. Then it should be fine. Okay, so at this point uh, we are waiting for our claim on uh, Portugal. Nine days. Okay, we got uh, the claim on uh, Portugal, so we're going to declare war on them uh, right away, and uh, we have to call Spain into this war. We're going to start the offensive immediately, and then we're going to start the claim on uh, Bulgaria. That means we're going to be about 50 days uh, late, uh, probably, um, with our rest of the run, because everything which could go wrong in this run uh, went, wrong, uh, so, uh, went wrong so far. So. But that's okay. It's a good showcase, actually, because uh, if everything goes smoothly, then uh, you don't know what to do when things go wrong. In this case, everything went wrong, so you know exactly how to manage this, uh, this situation. At least Portugal is easy. Okay, Portugal is taken. Navy and uh, puppet plus resources. Sorry, plus repra uh, war reparations. Okay, we got uh, Portugal. Now we get ready for uh, Vichy France. And technically, at this point, as soon as uh, Iran goes down, which usually doesn't take very long, uh, you can immediately go for Vichy France. Uh, since we still lack Bulgaria, we're going to take Bulgaria first, and then we're going for Vichy France. So again, we're going to be a couple of, uh, maybe a month late uh, compared to the usual. Now, we got free civilian factories. What to do at this point? Uh, from now on, actually, with civilian factories, uh, you can just build more military factories uh, wherever you can. So not so much in your land. Uh, but I would suggest doing it uh, in your puppet's land uh, whenever they have uh, fairly developed uh, uh, provinces, uh, like in this case uh, here. Usually Portugal develops very well, and so on. Uh, but again, uh, civilian factories are free from now on. Just build uh, military factories wherever you can. Uh, at this point of the game, we can also train another 24 uh, offensive divisions. Uh, we are going to need them later, so we can start doing it uh, now in uh, Istanbul.
What are we waiting for, Iran? I mean, not that I'm in a particularly, particularly in a hurry, but uh, it actually be convenient is if they uh, went down because we could use the defensive army. Oh, no, we cannot do that though. Okay, Bulgaria joins the Axis. Perfect. So we cannot take Bulgaria in any case. Hmm. <laughs> That's okay. I guess we are not uh, taking uh, Bulgaria. That's fine. Again, very unlucky with Bulgaria. Usually we get it, uh, and in this case we are going to get Bulgaria later. And Bulgaria is the weakest and least important uh, of all of these countries. Uh, there isn't much to gain from uh, taking Bulgaria early, so I guess we'll take them later when, uh, when we go after the Axis. Mind that usually in this uh, guide uh, you're able to take Bulgaria a lot earlier. Okay, then we can send our divisions back, I guess. And uh, for CAS, I suggest uh, this MIO priority. And if you guys go there, we can finish this war. Oh, uh, at this point, it's quite important that you stop uh, the naval invasion support, which I completely forgot in uh, Spain uh, forever. And uh, you can send uh, your fleet uh, to gather in this harbor here, because when we attack Vichy France, we need to be careful they actually have uh, a fleet. Okay, Iran is uh, finally down, so we're going to puppet them and take the war reparations. Now, we don't have very long, we need to prepare for uh, Vichy France, so we're going to use uh, our defensive uh, divisions here to attack Vichy France. And we're going to use our offensive divisions in uh, mainland uh, Vichy France. As soon as our divisions are ready, we are going to start uh, the offensives. Okay, so I would say we are ready. So before you declare war on uh, Vichy France, it's very important that you join uh, the Axis. Otherwise, uh, uh, they will join the Axis and you will be fucked. So we're going to join the Axis. This doesn't mean we are going to join uh, World War II just yet. And uh, we're going to declare war on uh, Vichy France. We are going to start our offensives immediately, all of them. We need to call uh, Spain into this war. And we need to call uh, Iraq into this war as well. I'm 
emredersiniz. Okay, it's quite good because Vichy France was at least uh, a bit weaker than usual. France was a pain in the ass the whole game and then they sucked badly. But that's okay, at least uh, this war will be a bit faster to end. Okay, when you get uh, the rocket artillery research done... I suggest you start producing some uh, rocket artillery. I would uh, assign uh, 10 factories to it. Take them from uh, your fighters. Something like this. If we can get uh, an early Vichy France, the first good thing in this run. Eh, should, huh? to be honest, but Hazırım. will we? Hazırım, efendim. Okay, we did actually. We capitulated Vichy France a bit faster than usual. Again, there is some RNG in this run, so uh, we were unlucky with some things. We were a bit luckier with this one. Now, with Vichy France, we absolutely want to take the Navy. This is very important, uh, so prioritize that. Uh, then, of course, we want to pop at them entirely. And then you need to see if you have enough points. Uh, you probably won't have enough points uh, to get uh, the, the war reparations uh, everywhere, so... You can submit the months and then add uh, the war reparations. Uh, in this case, uh, we had enough uh, for everything, so that's pretty lucky. So start with the navy, then pop it, then the, then get the, the war reparations. Uh, and that's enough for this. So we can confirm. Now that Vichy France is down, we can start uh, justifying a war goal on the UK. It's going to take only 10 days. And we can prepare to make our amazing entrance in World War II. No, we need to prepare slightly for World War II. It's not going to be particularly difficult, but we need to do a couple of things uh, initially. So first of all, and most importantly, we need to send all of our fleet, including the new French fleet, uh, to Dunkirk. And that's the most important thing, especially we need to make sure that they pass uh, over Gibraltar. Otherwise, during the war, we may be in trouble with that. You can basically do whatever you want with these divisions. Uh, it would be wise uh, to keep them uh, in uh, mainland uh, Turkey, just in case uh, they start uh, the UK starts a naval invasion. So I would do something like this uh, to protect uh, Turkey. And if you have some extra divisions, you can actually send them uh, to fight uh, against Italy. Uh, no, sorry, Italy is with us. <laughs> Never mind. You could send uh, them uh, to fight uh, together with Italy uh, here. More importantly, uh, we need uh, to prepare our defensive divisions to push uh, into the UK from uh, Vichy France. So we are going to assign them here and we are going to go for a spearhead. We want to take and deal 
as much damage as possible in here. So we want an offensive on the whole line. We want to deal damage to the UK uh, as soon as fast and as fast as possible. Again, you can use your other divisions to protect uh, the mainland. Then the other thing that is going to be very important against the UK is uh, destroying enemy planes. Uh, uh, we have very good fighters, although we don't have a lot of them. But we want to make sure that all of our fighters are assigned to the right place. So we're going to select all of them and we're going to send them all to the English Channel. We could have a little bit more, but some are coming, so it's overall a fair amount of uh, fighters. And then, of course, we want to plan our naval invasion of the UK. We are going to do it uh, with our main offensive army. I suggest you select the units with uh, more experience. And for the invasion of the UK, I go for something like Sea Lion. I send uh, three divisions to Dover. I send another three here, I send another three here, and I send the very last one here. And they're almost always uh, sure to disembark, the UK tends not to defend very well their own mainland, so this should be easy and fine. Okay, we got uh, our claim on the UK. We just want to wait for the fleet uh, to be in uh, position. Perfect. Our fleet uh, is ready and it's a pretty good fleet uh, considering that we got the fleet uh, from Portugal, Spain and Vichy France. So it will be enough uh, to get the naval superiority in the English uh, Channel. Uh, we just want to make sure that our divisions are all in uh, position and then I would suggest making a save at this point. And uh, we are going to start uh, our war against uh, the UK. Now, our goal is, uh, if possible, to get to around 20% war score by the end of the war. And uh, we are going to achieve that mostly with uh, our planes uh, destroying enemy fighters. So hopefully they will perform well. But also pushing in uh, uh, Syria is very effective. So we are going to call Vichy France into this war. And we are going to start uh, pushing immediately with our divisions. Okay, ideally they assign uh, their planes too, and our planes uh, will start performing very well. By the way, we just started. Our fighters lost one, enemy fighters lost 15 in the first day of uh, fighting over the channel. That's pretty good. Uh, which subject is this? No, we don't want our next our puppets. So. Now, of course, we will have a problem with uh, with rubber, but it doesn't matter. It's okay. This war is not going to last very long uh, in any case. Do 
doing very well with our fighters and uh, the naval invasion is ready so as soon as the naval invasion is ready we are going to start uh, getting the naval superiority with our fleet and we are going to trigger our naval invasion slow down a little bit here it's a delicate moment of the run and let's see if the uk is defending or not they usually do not defend they love leaving their cost completely undefended and just uh, capitulate uh, very fast that's what they are very very good at and it seems like uh, it's another masterclass on how not to defend your cost by the uk now uh, as soon as uh, your units disembark i suggest you send over the other units as well and you start planning your offensive in the uk now the uk loves capitulating very fast but in our case it's actually a little bit better if they can send some divisions back uh, and uh, if we get to fight them a little bit uh, it's better for the war score so hopefully they will send some divisions on the other hand uh, while uh, we get uh, or oh, after we get our divisions uh, on the mainland of the uk i would suggest uh, saving uh, your fleet uh, and uh, sending it sending it back to the harbors if you leave it here they will be engaged by the royal navy eventually and uh, well you get some war score but uh, i would rather save the fleet okay let's make sure that the fighters are in the right place so it's probably now better to send them to the mainland uk it's okay if they send some divisions as i said we want uh, we want to fight them if possible so we can start this uh, first offensive and let's see how we are doing in uh, here oh, we're doing pretty well in here By the way, this is for you watching the unedited version because I will edit this out from the main uh, the main version. But uh, in my opinion, the, one of the biggest uh, issues uh, with uh, this game, with the Hearts of Iron, is uh, exactly what is happening right here. Invading the UK ends uh, World War II, in fact, uh, easily. And it shouldn't be the case. The UK was never easy to conquer because uh, Germany could not achieve the naval superiority. They could not achieve air superiority. And in this game, it's very easy to achieve both. That really shouldn't be the case. You can force yourself, uh, if you want, uh, to make this world last longer by not invading the UK. But that's stupid. I mean, if you can, why wouldn't you do it? Let's give a look at the war score. We are at 11%. That's a bit too low. So we want to increase uh, our war score before we end uh, this war. Hopefully, we can do it uh, by fighting the UK a bit more here. And hopefully, eventually, they will send us some divisions back in the mainland as well. I'm going to stop the offensive. Uh, I want them to send more divisions. And suddenly, we are in Argentina. Okay, good, good. We need to fight. We need to fight a lot. Don't you stop. You keep going, boys. Keep going. Why do they have no divisions? Okay, when you get uh, these uh, focus done, uh, depending on your run, it may be a bit earlier uh, or a bit later. I mean, the focus is always at the right time, at the same time. But uh, it may be before the invasion of the UK. Uh, I suggest that uh, you also pick uh, the uh, theorist, uh, the military theorist. And then uh, you pick as many doctrines uh, as possible, because now we have a lot of discounts. So you can pick uh, as many doctrines here and uh, the air doctrines you should have picked them uh, i should have picked them earlier too because there is no point in waiting but yeah something like this now if you have an abundance of political power you can do whatever you want with it uh, 
Uh, one uh, good uh, thing that you can do with it is uh, you can modernize uh, the general directorate, uh, directorate of military factories. Uh, this is the best uh, one in terms of return uh, from all of these decisions. Or you can assign medals or really whatever you prefer. I'm going to use this one. Oh, some divisions. That's good. That's good. But Germans here. That's not good. We don't want Germany to take uh, our precious war squirm. So if Germany is starting to send divisions, uh, then uh, you cannot delay this anymore. It's time to go after the UK to end the war. Let's uh, check the war score. Oh, 22%. Exactly what we wanted. So we are now ready to end uh, this war. And before doing so, though, I suggest making a save just in case the peace conference is messed up because there is always a chance of that happening. Okay, I will save now because I think we're pretty close. And then I will show you the peace conference and our tutorial is officially done. I think this is a better time to save. Perfect time to save. Okay, we got 24% uh, of the war score. We're very happy with that. It was very difficult to get more. Look at Italy. And uh, now, uh, I'm, uh, now I'm briefly going to talk about the priorities in uh, this peace conference and then uh, we can consider the tutorial done. So first of all, we want to puppet uh, Suez, Gibraltar and Singapore. These are the most important things that we absolutely want uh, because we're going to get a lot of resources from them. Then We need to see what Germany wants to do with the rest of Free France, uh, because sometimes they claim Free France for themselves, sometimes they give it to Vichy France. Since we do not know yet at the moment, I suggest that uh, you puppet uh, Brabant, uh, which is going to be important in any case, whatever happens. You can also take Normandy, just in case, uh, because this is the other very important one. And then we submit the months and we see what Germany wants to do. Now, see, Germany actually wants to give uh, France uh, to Free France. We're very happy to, sorry, Free France to Vichy France. We're very happy with that uh, because Vichy France is already our puppet. So we can forfeit uh, Normandy since they want to give it uh, to Vichy France, but it's very important that we take uh, Brabant. Why do we want to take Brabant? Uh, this will be explained in the next guide, uh, but you can already see how easily we can get an encirclement here against uh, Germany and another one here. So you can already get an idea of the strategy. The other ones though we absolutely want, so we're going to fight for them. And uh, what does Germany want to do here? Okay, so here Germany wants to puppet free France. We are not happy with that. So at this point we are going to uh, claim Normandy for ourselves. Oh, come on, give up.
Okay, finally they gave up. So we got what we needed. Mostly Brabant if they give everything to Vichy France. If they don't give everything to Vichy France instead, I suggest you take something like Center and uh, Normandy and uh, you get ready to uh, encircle the Germans in these areas instead. Now at this point we want to take uh, as much of uh, their navy as possible. I think we have enough points for basically the entire navy of everyone. Perfect, and this will solve our navy problems for the rest of the game. And then uh, I would suggest taking more reparations for from some rich regions, if there is any. But we didn't really take very rich regions. Well, Provence is not bad. Normandy is not bad, uh, but that's uh, that's really not a priority. One last thing that I would suggest doing, although this is not mandatory, is uh, making sure that uh, between Italy and Germany they took everything there was to take. They didn't leave any allies around. You can do that by checking here and if they forgot something, like in this case, uh, you can go and puppet them so that the allies uh, completely disappear from the game. I would suggest uh, checking at least uh, uh, the UK, France uh, and... Uh, um, and India, because those are the places where they sometimes forget something. Seems not to be the case. I mean, uh, you can check everyone else if you want, uh, but I would say we're pretty happy with what we got. Uh, so we're going to exit uh, the conference. And uh, here we go. So we are ready for uh, the access in uh, the next uh, chapter of this guide. For this guide, that's all. Uh, it was quite unlucky. I'm very sad that we were not able to take uh, Bulgaria, but we were able to take uh, everything else. Uh, so this was overall a very successful tutorial. Uh, this is a great strategy, guys, because making Turkey this powerful, look at the amount of uh, factories we have. Uh, 300 is more than the German Reich usually has uh, by this point of the game. So this is really quite impressive with, uh, with Turkey. If you enjoyed the guide, please do not forget to leave a like, subscribe to the channel and leave me a comment. A lot of effort went into this guide. If you watched the whole guide, thank you for watching. Don't miss the next episode because it will be Turkey versus the Axis and it will be amazing. If you haven't joined our Discord yet, make sure to do so. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye bye.